by the year 2000, the United States will have its first laboratory in space. With a design made of modular sections, the space station will be a work center in orbit and will offer many benefits to our world. Utilizing the scientific analogy of the space station in educational settings can pave the way to ensure that our nation will have a qualified pool of scientists, engineers, computer specialists, researchers, and technicians who will lead us into the 21st century as the space explorers of the future. Using the space station as a way to enhance instruction is exemplified at the Anton Gradina Primary Achievement Elementary School in Cleveland, Ohio. Students, teachers, parents, and the entire community have come together with the help of the NASA Lewis Research Center, the Cleveland Metropolitan Housing Authority, CMHA, and the Cleveland City School District to form the Educational Empowerment Project, a project that entices students to imagine themselves as future astronauts on a mission into space. But for the students at Anton, the future starts today. Anton Gradina is located near a CMHA public housing development. The poverty rate for this area is extremely high. The Anton Project represents a partnership between CMHA, NASA Lewis, and the Cleveland Public Schools. The intent of the project is to empower parents to better work with their children in science activities. A lot of other organizations and individuals have joined us in the endeavor. In fact, the project demonstrates what we can accomplish when we work together as a team. In addition, the project has attracted a lot of national attention, including visits to Anton Gradina by Congressman Louis Stokes, NASA Administrator Dan Golden, and astronaut Charles Bolden. The 1991-92 school year marked the beginning of a full-scale aerospace program. The ultimate goal was to build the Space Station Habitat Module. The students named their space station Space Station Harmony. Their space station would serve as the site for many space-related activities. In order to build a habitat, it was important for the students, teachers, and parents to learn more about space. For the students, monthly assemblies and small classroom sessions were held to explore scientific concepts as they relate to humankind on Earth and in space. Food and nutrition were studied to show the importance of having a good diet that includes the four major food groups. Other examples of food and nutrition demonstrated to the students how food is packaged for space and how the astronauts eat in space. Another activity explained to students how to say no to drugs and how to stay in good health by doing daily exercises. The students underwent some pretty vigorous exercise routines to show what astronauts must do to help stay physically fit in space. Scientific concepts introduced to the students about Newton's laws of motion, including action-reaction activities, held the students' interest as they were amused and enthused with this unique experiment. Some of the small classroom sessions demonstrated magnetism, aeronautics, and how humankind has changed their mode of transportation from horse and buggy all the way up to the high-tech way of life we have today, traveling in space with the help of today's space transportation system. The students at Anton Gradina were having so much fun learning how to do experiments, learning how to grow things, learning how to measure things, and learning about comets 
that they didn't realize they were learning at all. Claire Friedman, Executive Director of the Cleveland Metropolitan Housing Authority, CMAJ, shares her thoughts about the program and what she calls an integrated approach to teaching. I just think it's fantastic. I'm so pleased to uh, be involved in this with the parents of our uh, housing project that, that uh, this school serves. And um, everyone's very excited about it. The other popular word that's used these days is holistic. Um, and we do buy into that and, and believe that there should be more of this kind of effort, more of a holistic um, uh, delivery of services to our families. And um, it's absolutely critical that the Housing Authority get more involved in programs such as this that, that uh, opens the, the, uh, the uh, world for the children so that they know there's something beyond this, uh, this small little neighborhood here. Parents attended numerous workshops throughout the school year to learn about the space project so they could share in their child's academic progress. Parents enjoyed an exciting field trip to NASA Lewis Research Center for a first-hand aerospace experience. Plans were drawn up and purchases made of materials creatively developed to make practically everything needed for the habitat modules. With the help of community organizations and NASA representatives, parents worked hard to construct the foundation for Space Station Harmony. Mel Jacobs has been a third grade teacher at Anton Gradina for 24 years and is impressed with the results of the aerospace project. It's hands-on, it's not something they have to read in the book, they have to just work with it, and this way they're able to work with it as a hands-on experience. Depending on the program, I, this type of program, absolutely, and if it's a beneficial program, no question about it. Sometimes programs have to be looked into more in depth, but this one worked out perfectly for the students, the teachers, and the community, with CMHA and NASA and Anton Gradina working together. Staff at Anton Gradina incorporated the space theme across the curriculum, utilizing science and math concepts through the aerospace mission. The teachers also involved themselves with numerous space and technological experiences and training to assist them with their classroom teaching. Okay, let's do number two together. Teachers and support staff developed lesson plans, bulletin boards, classroom and hall displays around the space theme to provide the students with a space-related learning environment. Teachers also develop contests for the students to design a school logo for the space project and a contest to name the space station habitat. The time has finally come for the liftoff of Space Station Harmony. Everyone is so excited, especially the students. And this is going to be a fantastic day. Okay, Mrs. Coleman, do they know where their positions are? Ines Powell, principal of Anton Gradina, is the guiding force behind the school's participation in the Educational Empowerment Project. Her dedication and commitment to educational excellence has been an inspiration to everyone who took part in the program. It's been a year-long project. Um, they have uh, been studying space activities and as they relate in space and on Earth. Uh, example, food, the importance of a good basic diet and how does that translate for a diet for astronauts in space. Um, general health, physical fitness, and in doing various studies of the vehicles that are used in space, they've had monthly in services by NASA engineers where we've had school-wide assemblies and small group sessions and they've studied such things, advanced things as Newton's laws, 
um, propulsion, etc. Uh, it's been incorporated throughout the curriculum since day one. And that means that we do not only what the district ask, us, ask of us, but we also uh, incorporate the space and science theme in reading, and they have daily journal writing. I think the interest in learning, the fun that they're having, um, has become is very infectious. They're transmitting that home, and the parents are very excited about it because the children come home excited. And as a, a result, an offshoot of that, we're having a high level of parent participation, which turns into um, a lesson of support, assistance with the parents, assisting the staff at the school with our whole purpose, the whole reason this is, this is about is so that the students will be acclimated at a very young age in the math and sciences and hopefully continue on as they grow older and go through the, their uh, education and not have that dreaded fear of the science and the math because they have enjoyed it at an early age and they've developed a sincere interest. Hopefully we may have an, ast an astronaut in the future from uh, Anton, from this very project that, that has generated so much interest. The students have taken it um, so far where they have done experiments at home on their own. Um, parents have become involved. We have in the corridor that uh, is pre directly precedes entry into the de de decontamination chamber where students and families together have built space stations. They have done all types of journal writing on it, and you know, the more you write, the more you read, the more you learn. The better your handwriting, the better your spelling, the better your creative thinking. It's all, it's, it's, it's uh, just enhanced everything across the curriculum. And, and just recently, in the last few days, we, you may have heard a loud noise. We saw our test results this year, and we were ecstatic. And we have to attribute much of what we've done this year to that. We have been uh, watching our test scores for the fourth four years, and uh, this being the next year, we've watched them for four years. There has been increase each year, and there have been a few decreases because we're in the middle of implementing a new magnet school program, non-graded primary achievement, and we're also using um, school-wide service. So we're in the process of implementing two major programs, and we were watching very carefully, carefully to see how all of the effects of those programs, the benefits of those programs, were affecting test scores. We saw increases, but this year we saw significant increases, and the staff let out cheers like you wouldn't believe, and it made them feel great because they knew that all the efforts and the uh, enjoyment that has been generated this year with this project um, has taken on such um, excitement for everyone that it, it actually was working and other things were happening. The fun of learning translated into real hardcore education. We have uh, shown increases uh, where we have met or surpassed the cluster and we are in Cleveland we're um, divided into six clusters of uh, schools, six um, areas, and we have surpassed the other schools in our cluster in math and reading, vocabulary and comprehension. We have met or surpassed the district's you achievement. Targeted. Yes, in, in areas of reading and math with the, our three grade levels. So you're leading the way. We're leading the way. What we thought was a minor project has turned into something very major, but in becoming very major, a lot of excitement has been generated and we've, the benefits are many. We've uh, seen a, a very, a tripling of parent participation. Tripling. Where before the project began we had some parent participation. It has at least tripled. Uh, we have had uh, an increase of staff support as far as staying after school. We've worked on weekends. We've worked after school. We've worked um, late evenings, I understand staff who worked at homes. Um, we have had um, our organizations that are our adopter school partners have come in, they've pitched in, so we've gotten all type of community support for this project. That has, our volunteer records are soaring. Um, 
the staff, I would say the benefits for them in addition to myself. I'm not excluding myself. We have learned so much about space, things that we didn't even know about before. And it is, has also served as a vehicle to bring cohesion to the staff. Every student at Anton has experienced many joys and wonders of excitement from this program. An excitement that can be instilled in every child's learning experience with the help of hands-on aerospace activities developed by NASA to enhance science and math teaching in a way that makes learning easy, enjoyable, interesting, compelling, and fun. The Educational Empowerment Project is indeed an experience the children at Anton will never forget. My name is David Fletcher. David Fletcher, and mm -hmm. what grade are you in? Kindergarten. What have you learned from this project? Mm -hmm. I learned how to do our homework and our math. And we, and we can um, play nicely and talk nicely and speak up nicely. Speak up nicely? <laughs> did you, did you, uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a bus driver. All right. Now, I wanted to ask you, do you know the planets yet? How about yes. telling me what the planets are that you know? Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Pluto, Mars. What's, what's your favorite planet? Pluto. How come? Because it's nice in there and cold. You don't like hot weather? Maybe I like hot weather. I learned how to like um, grow some plants and what would happen to things if you, you like put them in something. Like if you would put germs in a little case and tape it up, mm -hmm. they, they would start growing. Because in my class they started growing germs. Mm -hmm. And they had them in these little cases, and the next day they had water on the top of them. Parents of the children at Anton Gradina were active participants in the program. They are thrilled with the effects of the program, which promises their children enthusiasm for learning. They are also delightfully pleased to have been given the opportunity to share their child's learning experience by working together for such a meaningful effort. Kim Chandler. Chandler. And you have a, a kid in the school? Yeah, I have a preschooler, um, Sade Chandler. And the preschoolers, they made little astronauts uh, out of paper life size. And they have their name on it, they drew the faces, and they have them outside the classroom door for so many months until the other students get their space space outfits and they make those and they put them on the side of the door. So she brought hers home and it's hanging on the door. And it's so nice. And they teach them about the planets and, you know, taught them about the uh, moon and the stars and night. So at nighttime she looks up well. So my teacher told me that and this and is that the Big Dipper? You know, and it's good to see them with their minds on something so uh, so I say children are interested in science that much at four and five years old. But when it's introduced to them at such young ages in preschool and whatnot, they have a chance to have the interest of science and space and things. So when they get older, they won't be so immune to these things when they get in fourth or third grade when they have science. They say, well, I learned this in preschool. My teacher told me this and I heard of this. So they won't have to just hear from their parents all the time. They can come to school and get it. Are you learning anything? Well, yeah. Yeah, I've learned quite a bit. I learned that Jupiter was the biggest planet and, you know, in space, and I didn't know that. So it's a lot of things I'm understanding that I didn't understand because when I was young, I wasn't interested in science and the moons and the stars and whatnot. So I think it's real good. I think this is really good. We were going over the, he's over with the signs, the, the astrology, and I wasn't familiar with all the stars that, were supposedly in the skies and he was showing me some of the things that, that kind of it was pretty interesting this has been very interesting uh, morning for me you know uh, it's uh, re-stimulated me 
because uh, my, my grandson and myself uh, have a globe at home that we go over. And I see that he's learned more than I gave him credit for when he answered your questions, right. you know. And uh, my son uh, studied at home uh, with uh, his mother and I, uh, uh, the planets and so forth. He probably doesn't remember that, but uh, uh, this, I've never seen a school participate in the manner that this one has. Uh, that, uh, the uh, project from NASA has really stimulated the community. Leonard Cobbs is a NASA pilot, but devotes much of his time assisting, coordinating, and or conducting educational programs and learning activities for Lewis Research Center. He is impressed with the magnitude of student interest in technological subjects and with the continuous cooperation and support shown by parents. They ask very technical questions because they're interested and they want to know. And the challenge to me is to try to distill the science down to, the, say, the first grade level, kindergarten level, and still keep it accurate. They want to know like, how airplanes turn or questions evolving lift. And some of that you just can't paraphrase. You just have to just try to distill it down. So that's, that's the challenge to me. What it made work was just a combination of everybody coming together. The kids were easy because they're young and they're curious, but we had to overcome the initial resistance of the parents. Like, they were suspicious, is this going to work? But adults tend to be suspicious of something new. And we had to con convince the school board and CMHA and a lot of other people that this really would work. This is now the second year. And as we see here, it's starting to snowball. And we, know, we don't have the problem now convincing people this will work. We brought them out to NASA because this is a, we don't just work the children. The parents have to be involved. So when the children came out to NASA for a tour, the parents had to come along. And they got the tour. They got to ask questions. And we're not trying to teach the parents, per se, but we want them to know enough about what's going on so if they get a follow-on question when they go home, that they can reinforce what we're doing. John Hairston is the Director of External Programs at NASA Lewis. He has played a major role in ensuring support of the educational empowerment effort. The most important aspect of the program is the partnership that has been developed between CMHA, between the Cleveland Public Schools, Antigradina, uh, in, in particular, and most of all, the partnership that NASA Lewis Research Center has with these two entities. It goes to show that when we begin to focus and work together and, and let that focus be on children, that we can succeed. I will say to you that we have a uh, commitment at NASA Lewis Research Center. We will be following these children to the next level, and hopefully down the road, we will be able to provide a national model just by using the anti grandino model that to service children and acquaint them with the sciences, the, the sciences, and some of the other technical kinds of skills that we want them to have. Director of NASA Lewis Research Center, Larry Ross, took time out of his busy schedule to visit Anton Gradina on launch day. He had been briefed on the project and was given numerous details about the outstanding results of the program. However, Mr. Ross's visit turned out to be one of amazement as he was overcome by the glowing results from Space Station Harmony. After having just walked through the uh, culmination of a whole school year's worth of activity where people from uh, NASA, uh, both the federal workforce and our contractor workforce, and the wonderful, beautiful, vibrant young people here at Anton Gardena, Gardena School uh, have been learning and playing and having a grand time uh, for all this period of the school and today is the end of, of that activity. Uh, it just shows, uh, it's almost indescribable to get the spirit into words, the spirit I just saw on, on the part of the teachers and the young people into words, but it shows still the impact of uh, our program and the impact of our people can have on kids uh, making the learning experience be the kind of fun event uh, the interest in space these kids have allows it to be. And uh, it's just been a wonderful day and a wonderful experience. And I think uh, we can share some lessons we've learned and 
uh, we have learned a lot over the past uh, period of time with these young people. But it's been just great, and I thank everybody who took part in it. Sandy Walters is an educational specialist for the Office of Educational Programs at NASA Lewis. She serves as the program manager for the Anton Project. She oversaw the design of the modules for Space Station Harmony and worked to ensure that all aspects of the empowerment project functioned smoothly. In addition, Ms. Walters was instrumental in providing NASA's educational resources, aerospace activities, and technical assistance needed from NASA staff to make the program a success. I have thoroughly enjoyed working with the partners in this educational endeavor, and especially with Anton Gradina. Throughout my career, while working with students, I have never experienced such enthusiasm for learning as I have with the children of Anton, and I am intensely moved by the cooperation and support received from the parents and the staff. The positive results from this program have stimulated all of us with excitement and encouragement to reach the next level. This project is just the beginning as we look to move this program forward. The experience the children have had in working with hands-on aerospace activities has helped to prove that school-aged children can achieve an interest in science and math and thereby excel to new heights, shining stars, and become our space explorers of the future.